What's up, dorks? Welcome back to another episode of The Cave of Dorkness. This is number six, The Gamorrean Guard. Yes, we finally made it to a Star Wars collectible. <laughs> that didn't take long, um, but not surprising considering the entire universe is obsessed with Star Wars. It is without a doubt the first entity that I became preoccupied with as a child. Um, I, my mother tells me that in 1980, I was taken to see Empire Strikes Back as a newborn baby boy Brad. Uh, I don't remember that screening. I'll just have to take her word on it. I do know that my first movie memory is Return of the Jedi, uh, just a few years later. Um, saw it in San Diego, California. I will remember waiting outside in that line for a long time, being incredibly excited. Before seeing Return of the Jedi, I was already well familiar with the first Star Wars film and Empire Strikes Back. I had all the Kenner action figures. And, you know, they were truly the toys that I played with every day. I, you know, I would go on to collect G.I. Joe and Transformers and He-Man, Care Bears. God, I love that cloud car. If I still had that cloud car... I would show it off here in the Cave of Darkness, but alas, I don't. Um, but yeah, so Return of the Jedi. It's not my favorite Star Wars movie today as an old man, but back then it was without a doubt my favorite Star Wars film. It is the ultimate Muppet movie. Jabba's palace alone is filled with so many great characters and great action figures. Jabba himself with his buddy Salacious Crumb, Bib Fortuna, his right-hand man, Reese, uh, the Rancor and the Rancor Guard, uh, all of those. Oh my God. And, you know, Lando Calrissian in his bounty hunter uh, disguise, just the coolest toys, right? Um, but without a doubt, I've said that many times. I'm, I'm being very serious here when I use the word without a doubt because it's for real. My favorite toy was the Gamorrean Guard. Um... I still have my original Gamorrean guard somewhere in my parents' basement in one of my many tubs of Star Wars collectibles. Uh, those haven't made it to the Dork Cave just yet, uh, much to my parents' chagrin. They really want me to go and collect that stuff. But guess what? Not going to do it. I don't have the space here. What I do have the space for are a few Black Series action figures. Uh, for the longest time, after 1999 and, you know... The Phantom Menace. I stopped buying Star Wars toys. I was there at midnight at Toys R Us. Um, pour one out for Toys R Us. Oh, look. Oh, my, with my Alamo beer can. Pour one out for Toys R Us. Uh, I went there at midnight when they released the Phantom Menace toys several months before the film actually came out. I purchased my Jar Jars, my Qui-Gons, my Padmes. I got all that stuff. And that was the last major binge purchase of Star Wars action figures and for the longest time I was done I went on to collecting other things uh but Hasbro they purchased Kenner right and lately they've been killing it with the Black Series so in the door cave you'll find uh Darth Vader's you'll find uh, Director Krennic, Krennic a Ben Mendelsohn action figure can you believe that I can't uh, so, you know, there's there's some hidden Star Wars figures around. My latest acquisition is this Gamorrean Guard, though. Uh, mint in box. Haven't even opened it yet. I'm debating, should I make this an unboxing video? I'm going to think about it. Uh, maybe by the end we'll we'll go through a journey together. Uh, but we'll wait, have to wait and see on that. Uh, anyway, so, the Gamorrean Guard. Uh, he's at Jabba's Palace. He's one of several of his race hanging out with this crime boss protecting him and uh you know he they encounter c-3po and r2d2 in the opening scene of return of the jedi or i guess the post opening scene because the opening scene's on the new death star okay i'm getting it all mixed up don't get caught up on the details brad just keep going uh you know luke skywalker when he finally comes to jabba's palace he force chokes uh, a couple of those gamorrean guards and pushes them to side uh, although, if you go online, there's some debate as to whether or not Luke Skywalker force choked them. Because would a Jedi force choke a poor, innocent Gamorrean guard? Go to online, read that debate. It's there. It's real. 
So when we think about Return of the Jedi, we think about all these awesome aliens and all these awesome, awesome action figures. Uh, the Gamorrean Guard, he started life as one of many production paintings from famous Star Wars artist Ralph McQuarrie. Although McQuarrie's version of the character was a little more gorilla-like in feature, and he had this um, Buck Rogers-like armor all around him. Actually, he looks a lot like the knights in John Borman's Excalibur, but with a gorilla face. Uh, and so that was stage one of this guy's life. Uh, Joe Johnston was one of many other designers on Return of the Jedi. He would go on to direct The Rocketeer, Jurassic Park 3, Captain America, The First Avenger. Uh, he is the first artist to give the character the boar-like features, the snout. Uh, his version, though, didn't have any real clothing. It was a bare-chested, burly-looking pig beast. And it took uh, artist Dave Carson... Uh, to refine the character, to give him this uniform. Because, frankly, they didn't have the technology to give the Gamorrean guard that beautiful pig body. <laughs> so they needed to throw this tiny little brown tunic on him uh, and give him the, the fur skirt. So Dave Carson's the one who ended up really giving birth to the version we see in the film and the version we now have in plastic. Uh, now, Hasbro Black Series, they're the premium figures, right? Like, if you can't afford Sideshow Collectibles, you got to settle for a Black Series. And I don't feel so bad about that. Uh, the designers, Steve Bono and Steve Evans, that run Hasbro Star Wars division, they're killing it on these molds and sculpts. Amazing, amazing work. Amazing craftsmanship. Every now and again, they can't get a face. Poe Dameron... Uh, I don't understand why they can't capture Oscar Isaac's likeness for his figure, but it's a tragedy. <laughs> but for the most part, especially when it comes to the alien figures, they got this right. Um, Gamorrean guards, like I said, they don't have a lot of time in the film. You really are just there to admire their pig beauty. Uh, but, you know, just like you can go online and debate whether or not Luke force chokes them or not, you can read many stories uh, in the comic books, in the spin-off novels involving these pig guards. Uh, but, you know, Hasbro goes to the trouble of printing out a little biography on the back. I think I'm going to read it to you. Shall I? Okay. Gamorrean guard. Burly, pig-like brutes who favored axes and other primitive weapons. Gamorreans were often used as muscle by huts and other underworld kingpins. Job of the hut employed a gang of intimidating Gamorreans to guard his palace on Tatooine. Boom. Concise, short, beautiful. Um, okay. I'm going to open it. Let's make this an unboxing video. Let's do this. Uh, but in case I screw up and I have to redo this video, I'm going to remove the tape carefully. But you can tell right now, this is first draft because that's the actual tape coming off. Now, if you're watching this video later and I just open the box no problem, you'll know that I've gone back in time and redone this entire video. So we shall see which one goes online. Put that little tape there, pop this open, it comes out in plastic, ooh, little box. So when the Gamorreans push off Luke Skywalker before they get force choked or not force choked, they have this little staff. Can you check that out? Does that even come out? I don't know. I hope so. And they use that staff to block Luke. Um, but staff isn't cool. Staff is neat, but it's not cool. That's not what we're going to put in the Gamorrean's hands. What we're going to put in the Gamorrean's hands are his axes. One, two... He's a beast. I'd like to see him go up against Conan the Barbarian with these two bad boys. We'll put those there for now. And then here comes the figure. Uh, he's wrapped in... He's wrapped in plastic. No, he's not Lara Palmer, but he does have a couple rubber bands that make this difficult. But I have man strength, and man strength prevails. Oh, yes, it does. I ripped those rubber bands. Don't you like that sound? As a kid, I hated it. It gave me the heebie-jeebies. Boom! 
He's free. Get the rubber band off. Get the rubber band off. Get that other rubber band off. Here's the problem with taking him out of the package, though. One, not mint in box. I can't sell him for a million dollars later. Uh, but he's going to sit on the shelf, right? And he's got this beautiful fur coat. And that fur coat is going to collect so much dust. But what are you going to do? Because what fun is it to have an action figure in the box not being able to move his joints, not being able to bend his limbs, not being able to pit him against your other Star Wars figures. Now here comes a decision. What hand gets what axe? Or do we do one axe, two hands? No, we're not going to do that because we've got two axes. You don't just let one axe go. You have to have two axes. So we're going to go that. Boom. Is that a good stance? Does that look cool? I think it looks pretty cool. He looks like he's in a Mamma Mia chorus line, but that's okay. Uh, so there you go. The Gamorrean Guard, fresh out of package. This is draft one. I'm not doing another draft. I think I've succeeded. Um, I love Star Wars. You know, <laughs> that old story about Phantom Menace. Yeah, it was a sad day. It was a sad day of watching that film six times in a row before I figured out if I liked it or not. But given all the toxic hate we see today for The Last Jedi and how inaccurate that is, we need to put the hate for Phantom Menace and the prequels away. It's time to retire that angst. And you know what? Here's the deal. Those prequels, thanks to Dave Filoni, birthed the Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels. And that's, without a doubt, some of the best Star Wars storytelling out there. Uh, I haven't started watching Star Wars Resistance yet, but I am going to do that, absolutely. Um, and yeah, okay. So this is the first Star Wars collectible we've gotten to in the Cave of Darkness. I'm sure we will get to many more in the future. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for talking, you know, Ralph McQuarrie, Dave Carson, Joe Johnston with me. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. So... What do we do? We now follow my other dorks. Uh, the Turtle Dork, he's out there reacting to videos, doing many reviews on this channel. Go watch his stuff. Click subscribe. Click the like. Comment below. Follow the Disco Dork, Darren Smith, at the Disco Dork on all social medias. Follow my wife, Lisa Gullickson, at Sidewalk Siren on all social medias, including Letterboxd. Dishing out those stars there. Follow the indie dork, Billy Das, at WB Das on Twitter and Instagram. He hasn't Instagrammed in a while. I've been watching. I'm a little disappointed. Encourage him to do so. I, of course, am Brad Gullickson, the mouth dork. Follow me at mouth dork on all social medias. And until next time, guys, take care.